so this, the second row, first column now is 0. Now I do the same thing for uh, the, the first row, third row, first column. So let me go back here. I need to make this to be 0. So in order to be able to make this to be 0, this 25 to be 0, what I'll do is I'll divide by 144 the first row because I'm, at the, I'm still at the first step of our elimination. So that means that I have to use the first row as the equation which makes the elements below the first row in the first column to be 0. So I'll divide the first row by 144 and multiply it by 25. That will give me the multiplier in order to make this to be 0. And I'll show that on the next board. So the multiplier is 25 divided by 144. So that turns out to be uh, 0 0.1736. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the first row by 0 0.1736. Uh, so that uh, it makes the third row, first column, uh, to be 0. Then I subtract it. So when I multiply this, I get 25.00, and 48.47. Again, keep in mind that for simplicity reasons, I'm only uh, using four significant digits and showing my calculations. If you take more at home, you'll find out that you get a slightly different answer. I'm just doing this so that uh, it looks aesthetically pleasing. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, multiple of the first row and subtract it from the third row. So the third row is 25, 5, 1, 106.8. This is the third row. And I'm going to subtract this, which I get 25, 2.083, 0 0.1736, 48.47. And when I subtract it, I get 0. And then I get um, 2.917, I get 0 0.8264, so this is negative, negative, negative here, and I get 58.33. So you're seeing that by doing this operation of um, multiplying the first row by 0.1736 and subtracting it from the third row, I get 0 in the third row first column. And this is the end of the first step of our elimination which means that first, when we talk about the first step, use the first row to make everything below the first row in the first column to be zero. So it's algorithmically, you can see what I'm talking about. Everything is related to one. You take the first row, first column, that creates the, uh, and that creates the multiple. So you take the first row and you make the first uh, column below the first row to be zero. So this is what we get. We get 144. Uh, 12, 1, 279.2, the first row stays the same. Then the second row is uh, 0, 2.667, 0 0.5556, and the right hand side is uh, 58.33. And then we have 0, 2.667, uh, 0. Uh, uh, sorry, this one is 0 0.8264, yeah, 0 0.8264, yeah, that's what it is. This one is not 2. This is 2.917, okay, that's this one, 2.917, 0 0.8264, and then 58.33, and this one is 53.1, so... So the second row is 0, 2.667, 0 0.556, 53.1. The third row is this one, 0, 2.917, and 58.33. So that's the first step. End. So that's the end of the first step of uh, forward elimination. Let's go and look at now the second step of forward elimination. So, so we have to look at the second step of forward elimination. So let me go back to the previous board here. Now, what, 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 what are we going to do? Just focus on this part here. What we're going to do is that uh, we are going to, we, we are now going to do the second step of our elimination, which means that we got to take uh, this element here. We got to take this element here, and uh, this is in the second row, second column. Again, keep in mind, second step of our elimination. We're going to take uh, this second row, second column, and try to make this zero. But before we do that, what we need to do is we need to look at these numbers here in order to be able to see that which one is bigger, is this one bigger than this one. 
And so far as the maximum value, absolute value is concerned. So the absolute value of 2.667 is 2.667. The absolute value of 2.917 is 2.917. So this one is bigger than this one. That means that row 3 has to be switched with row 2 before we do anything else. So let's go ahead and do that first, and then we will make uh, this second, uh, third row, second column to be zero, because that's what the algorithm of the gas cylinder machine says. So, so the, before I do anything else, I need to take the absolute value of the second row, second column, third row, second column. So everything which is in the second uh, column below, second row and second row and below. So this maximum here turns out to be, so this is 2.667, 2.917. Uh, so this is the maximum. So this is the maximum, it's related to the third row. This is related to the second row. I'm going to switch uh, row 2 and row 3. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to switch row 2 and row 3. And my resulting equation is now going to look different. It's going to look like this, 144, 12, 1. Uh, 0, uh, 2.917, 0 0.8264. Again, keep in mind that you have to uh, you have to switch the right hand side also. Otherwise, the equations will not stay the same. So this becomes 279.2, and this becomes 58.33, and then uh, the second row becomes the third row, which makes it this 2.667. 0 0.5556, and then you have 53.10. Now what I have to do is I have to divide by 2.917 and multiply by 2.667. That will be my multiplier. And then I'll multiply it by th this row by that number, and then subtract it from here to make this to be 0. So the multiplier is 2.667, this number divided by this number. That's my multiplier. And that multiplier turns with 0 0.9143. And I'm going to take this multiplier and multiply it to the second row here. So I have 0 2.917, 0 0.8264, and the right hand side value is 58.33. And I'm going to use the multiplier of 0 0.9143. And this gives me 0. Uh, 2.667, 0 0.7556, and 53.33. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to subtract it from the third row. The third row is 0, 2.667, or the third equation, I should say, 0 0.556 and 53.10, which is the right-hand side number. And I'm going to take this and write it down underneath it. Again, keep in mind that you have to follow the algorithm of the gas initial partial pivoting to get the numbers. So I'm going to subtract this. And we get 0, 0, um, minus 0 0.2, and minus 0 0.23. So that becomes my third row now. And you see that in the third row, this is 0, and that is 0. So if I rewrite, and so this is the, uh, when I rewrite my equations now, when I rewrite my equations in the matrix form, uh, let's see what, what do I get. My first two equations will stay the same because I'm at the second step of forward elimination. So nothing changes about uh, the first equation. Uh, nothing changes about the second equation. Uh, the third equation is this one. So that goes there, which is 0, 0, minus 0 0.2 and minus 0 0.23. Uh, the unknowns are a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3. And that's the end of the second step of forward elimination. That is the end of the second step of forward elimination because um, uh, I have uh, gone through two steps uh, and got 0 and 0 here. And that's the end of the forward elimination also because I have been able to get uh, my coefficient matrix turned into upper triangular matrix. There are always n minus 1 steps, which means that there are uh, 3 minus 1, 2 steps in this case, which is 2 steps in this case uh, for forward elimination. And that is the end of uh, this segment. And in the next segment, I will show you how to do back substitution on these equations.